there's been times where some of you force velocity banking into your strategy, into your finances, and it ends up not being efficient. When, when we rely on our principles, values, and rules of leverage of velocity banking, we can let the math typically tell us which direction to go into. And then we can verify emotions with the, 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 the feelings, that, that current state that we're in. For example, I'm now in debt. I'm no longer a debt-free man. I now have a, a mortgage, right? It's, it's a first position home equity line of credit. I'm doing velocity banking, all this stuff. I've ran the numbers, trust me, on my own stuff. And I have videos coming out where I show you my case study. I show you all my numbers in detail. I could make way more money by not paying off my first lien HELOC and just making the interest only payment. I could make way more money by simply redirecting the cash flow back into the business and just claim a deduction of all the interest that I pay off my taxable income, make more money, right? Higher rate of return. That is the potential. The issue is all of the emotions that come with being a new homeowner. I simply just don't like having the debt on the property of that magnitude. Closed December 21st, it's now the original debt amount starting was 567,000, currently at 383,000, and we're only a couple months in, right? So my, my strategy is to have this fully paid off within three years or less. And then if I wanna leverage it how I wanna leverage it, cool. But being able to just be done with it over the next three years, that's just my focus. Like I'm, I'm saying no to Bitcoin. I'm saying no to Ethereum. I'm saying no to stocks. I'm saying, I'm saying no to a lot of other opportunities because I know how much this can affect my personal productivity, my ability to create value in the marketplace. I think I operate best when I have either no debt or all the debt is in my policy. I just, right? Like that's just how I am, how I'm wired. But you may not be wired that way, so don't be influenced by me. I'm just simply explaining just my, my process, what I'm going through, and it's important to evaluate emotional position with your financial strategy. How are these things, right? And if they're out of whack, out of alignment, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's dive, dive right into it, okay? Got to know our numbers. Very, 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 very important. What are our four major numbers before... I invest before I go hook up with that guru online and buy his or her $20,000 program. What are my numbers? Get very, very, very clear on that. Please, please, please. Let's say you have your numbers and you know, you're watching my videos, you're watching other people's videos, all these different finance channels. You're hearing all these different strategies, right? So I figured, let me write down some of the most popular financial products that are in the marketplace. I want to go one by one and just ex simply explain like the, f the, the simple function of the account. And then we can have a conversation back and forth about the timing as to when to get these accounts, if it even makes sense. And also, you know, touching on the different strategies that exist in the marketplace that may or may not make sense for that particular product. So I'm going to start with, then I'll throw in an opinion and I'll let you know, like, okay, here is my opinion about that product. And this is going to help you really uh, have a certain set of lens Every time you watch a new video from a different content creator, when you go and do research online, you read articles and you read books, you're gonna be able to cipher through fact. Sometimes opinions look like facts when it comes to the finance space because of that person's influence, stature, financial net worth. Sometimes what they say becomes what? Truth. I wanna put myself on the spot as well. What you may hear me say on, on the YouTube videos, oftentimes, more often than not, I'm saying, right? opinion. Okay. Here's what I think. Here's what I would do if I was in this situation. Here's what we decided to do when I was working with the client. Well, you'll hear me go through the case studies. I'm like, here's a client. Da, 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 da. Here's our situation. Here's their goals based on their situation, their goals. Here's the solution. We I'm talking to that client, but I'm displaying to everyone. So now you have to take that extra step as the viewer to not just take it as truth immediately, but you want to run the numbers. You want to run it through your financial decision-making process and say, okay, this is for me. This is not for me. And the biggest thing that we, we must be aware of that will happen, okay, happens all, happens to me is the FOMO, 
The fear of missing out is so real. Like literally some of you get stomach pain. Oh my God, I missed out on that financial opportunity. Oh my God, if I would have just da 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 da. Some of you guys twist. Your minds go into, a, 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 you spiral out because you think you're missing out on something enough. I'm like, look, if we have a process in place, I promise you, you'd never miss out on anything. Because if the opportunity was truly for you, our Father in Heaven will make it happen for you, especially for my believers in the room. Like, come on. If God wants something for you, trust in Him, not me. Trust in Him. He is going to make a way for you. But that's only if you're going by His will and not your ability to make something happen.